welcome back to Auto Review. And on our test drive, uh, we are not doing any test drive today, but uh, we're going to walk around this area of Overland Kings. And uh, nung araw talaga hong marami kami coverage ng mga off-road adventures. And seeing all these rigs around brings back a lot of memories of our off-roading days. And today, we are going to talk to uh, Joel Pedro, who is the Chief Adventure Officer of Overland Kings. And he will tell us more about the vehicle behind us, which is like a mobile apartment. <laughs> mobile apartment or mobile home. It's completely set up and we will ask Joel about it. Hi Ron, good morning. Thank you for having me and uh, having me in auto, auto review. Maybe before we get into the car, okay. um, I think it's good to have a background on why we set it up that way. All right. And you know, this uh, life, this pandemic that has happened to us has really caused a lot of change in terms of travel. And uh, yes, we do know that sometimes it has hit the auto industry in a lot of ways. But also, it has also opened a new opportunity on how to travel. And uh, because of the lockdown of air flights that are being more difficult, land travel has become more popular. And uh, I think that's what overlanding is essentially about. Right. It's land travel that gives you the capability to even explore the outskirts of the Philippines or wherever you are with the comforts of home. And I think with that in mind, this is where this setup comes in. So what we have behind me is a Land Cruiser 79 series. So it's a 2016 model. It's a rebirth edition. Um, a lot of my friends joke me, this is not the V8 model. <laughs> this is the six-cylinder 1HZ model. And the only way to distinguish that is the hood scoop. So it doesn't have a hood scoop. Um, it's not locally released, but uh, this is a Dubai version. And uh, we've uh, outfitted it for overlanding. Uh, if you look at, I start with the outside. Uh, first, usually one of the first upgrades we do is we uh, put uh, tires and uh, rims to it. Uh, that would deliver the off-road capability for, for the vehicle. So for example, we're running, uh, this one we're running a Nito uh, Trail Grapplers uh, for mud purposes. And I'm running 20 inch rims. Now I don't need, that. a lot of people say 20 is too big, but again, we're overlanding. So we're not doing the hardcore trails. And then uh, out the outside, we've equipped this with a winch. We do have a Dominator winch, 12,000 pound winch. Well, what the winch does is to make sure when you get a winch is to make sure that it's capable to pull your vehicle. Uh, so it's 12,000 pounds, more than enough to pull the Land Cruiser. Bar work, we have our bar work here. This is an ARB bull bar. In Australia, usually they use it to hit kangaroos. Yeah. But in the Philippines, I always say, just put bar work if you're putting a winch. Because there's nothing much you, you do with it. In Australia, they even call it the roo bar. Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. Kangaroo bar. <laughs> Kangaroo bar, yep. Uh, we have King's driving lights, 9 inch. This provides uh, uh, visibility when you're on those night trails. Now, I always caution, don't use this on your city lights. Yeah, yeah we get in trouble for that. Yeah. Only use it for trail purposes, but once it hits the trail and it's pitch black, definitely a good thing to have. It's running a two-inch lift. Uh, this is a two-inch lift with a coney suspension with OME springs. Um, why two-inch? Because if you watch the legal way to lift vehicles, not in the Philippines, but in other countries, a safe lift is two inch. Anything usually more than two inch, you'll need a special permit. It's a competition lift. So it's, it's a, for it to be road legal in other countries, two inch is the safest way to, to lift because we're still within the geometry of the manufacturer spec and we're not changing brake lines, we're not changing all that. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's the most conservative lift that will get you to 80, 90% of what you want to do. My step boards to add protection, um, I've gone with a different approach. I've put Linex on it. So th this is actually a Linex sprayed step board. So it's not a steel step board. What, what it does, it, it gives you a uh, scratch and impact resistant. And I like that, so I put Linex on my mirrors also. Uh, what this does is, uh, just in case I hit something like trees or anything, it reduces the impact of the damage so I don't destroy uh, certain parts of the car. Let's go to the fun part. Ron, uh, what, makes, what makes this different for uh, this Land Cruiser is, again, it's designed for overlanding. So 
We talk about the vehicle, how it's set up for driving. Now let's talk about once you get to the destination, where you see your waterfall, where you see your lake. So how do we get comfortable? This is where the rest of the setup comes in. So first and foremost, you will already see this. We have uh, Adventure King's tour tent. Basic term is a uh, roof tent. Oh, roof tent, roof tent. Right. yeah so that's the rooftop tent that's the basic term for it there are a lot in the market uh, there are different brands that are also good uh, there's just one of them that are one of the brands that are available so this is called adventure kings what our roof tent does is if you've camped before on the ground is when the weather comes in yeah. you get wet condensation all of that it, it elevates you off the ground and uh, it has a cushion inside and it's roughly a queen size bed so you can sleep two adults and two kids easily. So if you're a family and you just want to explore the outdoors, it's a great, great uh, place to have. That's the, that's the roof tent, completely waterproof. And on, on the right of this, this is the, this is called one of our newest things. This is called the shower awning. For your serious business. <laughs> so shower tent and uh, let me show, let's, let's see what's inside the shower tent. I like little details. Usually tents open in the middle, right? Yeah. Look at how this thing opens. From the side, extra space. And this is where the main business comes in. Yeah. Part of overlanding is to make sure you still get to do number two even you're out there. So, I don't know how this comes out in media and TV. <laughs> we have a map so that when you're done doing your toilet, your feet are not dirty. Then you can take the shower. Then you can shower in here. So you're wondering how we shower. So what we have here is our shower attachment that will work for your shower. This vehicle is equipped with a shower system. So we just plug that in. Turn that on and then you have a shower. So if you're showering in here, so that's the shower tent with the shower or a lot of use, you know, water is always a good thing to have. So clean your car, like this one, or clean your bikes if you're in whatever adventure you're in. Then when you're done, just shut it off. Make sure you let it go because we're going to get a lot of water Back here is the drawer systems. So this is probably something unique to the Philippines. So the drawer, the drawer systems gives you organization. That's, main, that's the main key. So usually when we travel, we have boxes and boxes, right? What the drawer system does is you can now just put, let's say you have a freezer system, you just put a freezer here and then you can pull this out. Then, dito uh, na mo, without touching anything else. So that's what it does. Um, the other thing it can do also is I've organized my, uh, this is my spare parts. This is quite organized right now, a little bit, because we just came from a trip, so we actually have a full setup here. Um, so this is generally my, my bug spray or anything else that I bring for the trail. Recovery gear. And my other side is my kitchen. We have gear from Mountain Mule. So basically what this does is you can organize everything that you're doing into bags into the drawer. So you can, you can put it this way. This is my coffee kit. This, these are all my tent pegs. So all of these things need to be pegged down. We have, we're not pegged down. So we have our ropes, our wires, our bungee cords. So this, at the end of the day, this is used for organization, right? So the drawer system is, is for your organization. So Okay, so here's the business end of the deal. These are all my recovery gear. Just in case we get into a trail, uh, and then once we're on the trail, you get stuck or something. This is where these gear come into play. So this is a high lift jack. Um, a high lift jack, basically since your car is lifted, this is used so that you can jack your car up in case you have a flat tire. You know, it's simple. But 90% of the time, it's used for display purposes only. Pampa <laughs> <laughs> foggy <laughs> uh, This is a more practical thing. Okay, this is a Max Trax. Obviously, mine's quite dirty because it gets used a lot. So when you get stuck on sand, when you get stuck on uh, mud, this is one of the things that comes out for me. So what I like with Max Tracks is we have mounts that are quite easy to use. So it comes with the original accessories from Max Tracks. So, so you're ready to go with, with that. Um, 
I just have my shovel strap because 90% of the time, I, when you use your max Max, you will need your shovel. I'm not gonna remove this anymore, but basically that goes under the car. So just in case you need to back up or you need to, that gives you the traction yeah. that you will need. Um, on this side, um, this is our awning. When we're, so the other side for me is a living space. For this side is like the cooking lounge space when you're camping. <laughs> so we have our chairs. So usually you can have a table. Um, but what's important is the shade. Right now it's around 11 o'clock in the morning and the sun's up. Maybe 37, 38 it's degrees. It's 38 degrees, but under here, uh, you'll definitely feel cooler yeah. over just being under the sun. So uh, the difference of these is the material of these awnings are UPF rated. So UPF rated just gives you sun protection. It's basically like your sunblock and rain protection, right? And uh, what's incorporated in these awnings nowadays is it has an LED light. So these LED lights will light up at night. You can plug it into your 12-volt system. It gives you light when you're at night to brighten up the awning. Aside from the power coming from your car, uh, what, what, what is your other source of uh, power? These cars are designed to stay off-grid. So I usually bring a solar panel. If you're running more than a freezer, then we do bring our generators. Uh, we have inverter generators also, so that, that's my setup. But usually, for my purpose, because in the Philippines, three days, two nights is more than enough. Yeah. Uh, that's, we're usually weekenders, eh, right? So the, the design of my car is to last us three days and two nights. The dual battery is enough for me, the isolator is enough for me, and I run one freezer, that would be enough to run that, that, uh, that time. On top of uh, your vehicle over here, yeah. uh, of course you saw the awning, very nice setup, and then the tent. Tell us more about it. What, what I have designed here on my pickup is I actually have a roof deck. So uh, as you can see, I have a terrace. So that's an Overland King's design. I don't think there's anybody who has that. <laughs> um, I, I like it because I travel with my kids and they like climbing around. So what I do set up there is a, a little bit of a terrace. Yeah, it has a turf. If you really want to go driving range on your turf, where uh, But basically, I put a chair up there. That's where I have my morning coffee. I sit up there and uh, you know, Hopefully you're facing some nice lake or some nice mountain as a view. So that's what that terrace does. And it's connected, you see it's connected to the tent. Uh, the tent window has an opening and you can just come out from there. And so basically you'll have, you have like a loft, right? You have your loft bed and then you have your terrace from your loft bed. So that's what's unique about this design. Uh, we do a lot of designs, it's just one of those concepts. Thank you very much, uh, Joel, for having us here. And maybe we'll have another time uh, for, for your other gigs uh, and uh, your other setup uh, here at Overland King. Thank you, Ron. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ron, Thank for you. having me. I'll see you soon. All right. Thank you.